I thought I'd show you guys my travel companion for the week. My rooster. And it was... I didn't mean for him to be my travel companion for the week, but he's a hitchhiker. <coughs> or stowaway. I've been on vacation the last couple weeks. And this rooster showed up at our house. It's our neighbor's rooster. He said he's kind of a menace or something. I can't remember. He seems like a pretty good, pretty good pet. But anyway... So my, I did a service on my truck, and so I was bobtail, and I had my other trailer sitting on the other side of my driveway. So I start the truck, go to the other side of my driveway, hook to the trailer, sweep the trailer out. Uh, that air dryer just went off and scared him. Um, swept my trailer out, and took off and went four miles to the chair plant, or to the furniture factory. Unhooked that trailer hooked onto my loaded trailer, did a 15 minute pre-trip, took off, drove three hours or so to Mount Vernon, Illinois and got fuel and uh, pulled up and all of a sudden this rooster's next to me and I just thought that's weird that a rooster would be in this parking lot and all of a sudden I realized it was ours. I think he's a bantam. He doesn't have a very big tail and he's got uh, feathers on his legs. And I recognized him. I thought, oh man, that's our rooster. So, let me walk up here. I'll show you where he's riding at. I mentioned that I did that service, so I I uh, popped the hood, you know, made sure everything was good. And, of course, I switched these trailers, so I would have noticed him on the frame. So, he would have had to have rode under here on, on top of a fuel tank or something well anyway there's probably not a whole lot of air moving under here but he rode here for three hours doing 65 and you know 70 mile an hour down hills in indiana and rode under there and i didn't know what to do with him oh see he follows me and um walk back down here so you don't hear that truck running so i just thought tough luck rooster you're gonna live in illinois from now on and i put him in some grass in front of my truck he ran right back to me, and I thought, I don't know what to do. Kind of felt bad for him. I didn't want to just leave him there. See, he looks, he follows me. And um, so I went in and used the bathroom, got my fuel ticket, and the cashier had a headset on so they can, there's like three workers working there, so they can talk to each other when one's outside or something like that. I hear her go, what's in the parking lot? And I just start laughing. And uh, she... She said, you don't have a pet rooster, do you? I said, no, it's, it's my rooster out there. And I told her a story about how he rode on the truck. And she um, she said, well, you got to do something with him. My, my manager's out there freaking out. And I'm like, over a rooster? And she goes, yeah, she's a city slicker. And tore her up or something. And I said, all right. Well, I said, I need my fuel receipt. And she goes, well, just go take care of that rooster and then come back and get it. Well, I said, okay. So I went out there and probably from that, tree right there to my truck that's where the they were two women were standing with the boxes she gave me a box and uh, i started poking holes in it and that rooster ran right over to me then i really felt bad to leave him there because it seemed like he recognized me i don't know if that's possible or not but so i put him in a box that was monday today's wednesday so he's been i don't know where he went oh there he is so he's we've been three days together now and uh, he's pretty good companion, really. He's, I let him out a little bit, but I leave the box open. He just sits next to me, but I noticed he is getting a little more restless. He just stands there and crows, and, it, and he, I won't let him out of that box. You know, I don't want my truck a mess, but he really doesn't make too much of a mess out of that box. I let him out at night when I stop like this and let him run around for a while. It's not too hot here. It's kind of overcast, so it's not too bad. But yeah, he's a pretty good travel companion. But it, I hope he's not doesn't want to make a habit of it. I'm gonna have to check under my truck from now on. And the funny thing was that morning I heard him crow, and I took off, and I thought I hope I didn't run over him. Uh, little I know he's under me. Uh, I don't know why he didn't jump off when I started the truck or moved or you know switched those trailers out. He didn't move till I got fuel. Um, the other funny thing was I was at one of my stops. Oh, there he is. I was at one of my stops and I saw some tall grass. I thought I'll get him a little bit of grass. 
I grabbed a hand. I thought I don't want anybody to see me. They'll think what am I doing with that grass? So I grabbed a handful of grass and got back in my truck and I look over and there's two women over there smoking and they said, what do you got in that truck? So I got him out. They were like oohing and gooing over him and there you go, single men get you a rooster. Women love him, I guess. But I set him down in the grass and they're like, won't he run off? I was like, no, unfortunately he won't. He won't, he just follows me around. I, I don't know, maybe he's lonely because he's used to being around chickens, so he's the only rooster or chicken we have. So I guess I'll take him home. At least it's a, it's a funny story, I guess. He's, he's not too much trouble. He's actually a lot less, that's why I never wanted to travel with a dog or a cat or anything like that under just a pain having to take him out. So he's not too bad. He's not too much trouble. If anything else, it's a funny story. It's really amazing that he rode under that truck that long at highway speed and he must have been clutched to an airline or clutched to an airline or something. So there's my rooster story and hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.